Take this away. Take this away, you slave. Take it. Take it. Take it now. Take it. Take it away. Take it now. Oi, man slave. Take it. <laughs> Look at his face. Look at his face. <laughs> So let us start with this funny story. So this is going viral at the moment where Prince Charles is basically getting his um, man slaves to take ink and pen away from his desk. And you can see how angry he looks <laughs> because the man slave is not fast enough to take it away from his desk. I mean, come on, guys. This guy has had privilege, you know, written all over his face. I mean, ever since he was growing up, there's stories about how his man slaves basically um, get his toothpaste for him. They squeeze the toothpaste out, put it in a, in a brush. They probably brush his teeth as well. I mean, there is stories about how all of these man slaves, they, there's a, quite a few of them working in Buckingham Palace. They're basically, um, doing all sorts of slavery for these royal families and guess what we pay for it all obviously from our taxpayers so slavery still exists guys and this kind of gives you proof that slavery still exists i mean the fact that prince charles is not even asking the guy nicely to take the pen away or oh, why doesn't he do it himself he's got two legs he's got two hands why doesn't he do it himself if i'm signing a document in a in an important document and there's a couple of pens in front of me or some ink in front of me and it's bothering me I'm not gonna start shooing in some of my man slaves to sort that out I'm gonna get up move it out of the way myself because I've got two hands I've got two legs I don't expect people to do that for me and you can see this guy has basically been privileged um, he's born out of a silver spoon he's used to slaves basically attending to his every need and this is what you get. I mean, look how angry he looks because the slave is just not fa fast enough to take his pens away from his desk. And this is what goes on behind the scenes. And this is who is our now our new king. I mean, yeah, God saved the king and all of that. There is also a story how King Charles has been avoiding inherit inheritance tax as well. So he has avoided paying millions and millions of inheritance tax. And this is money he inherited from the Queen, um, obviously. And so he's making a lot of money from her estates. All of her stuff has been transferred to him. However, he doesn't have to pay any inheritance tax, which is millions and millions of pounds worth. And like this article says king charles will avoid uh, paying the inheritance tax lucky for some exactly exactly while the rest of us you know are struggling with high energy costs high bills even high taxes as well and the rich in this world they just don't have to pay any tax you're talking about the king here you're talking about rishi sunak's wife um, you know, the rich just get away with it without paying any sort of tax whatsoever. And it's just the poor people who suffer, really. This is basically a clip of a Ukrainian guy. You can see clearly he's written a swastika on the floor in a London shopping centre. And this is a famous shopping centre in Canary Wharf. So obviously a lot of uh, rich people there shop. So he's uh, obviously military age. He's run off from U run away from Ukraine. He doesn't want to enlist there. He doesn't want to die. So he comes to UK and he starts writing swastika stickers on the floor. Absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting, guys. I mean, you know, you open your borders, you open your homes to these guys in Ukraine, and they come here with no respect. They feel like they're privileged. They can uh, graffiti and put swastikas on wherever they want. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. This guy needs to be arrested. I mean, he's just got caught now. But imagine how many other places he's put swastikas on that he hasn't been caught in. He's probably put it in loads of places. I mean, I I travel on the bus a lot. And I, on the bus, I, I've noticed a huge amount of swastikas all over the bus, all over it. 
I mean, there are a huge number of Ukrainians living in my area as well. And you just have to put two and two together. I mean, they, they come here, they run away from their countries because they, they don't want to die, they don't want to get enlisted. They come here as refugees, get all of these freebies, you know, get free homes, free benefits, and, and this is how they repay us. Absolutely disgusting. I am beyond words here. Absolutely disgusting. And he's using a bloody tissue to r wipe it off. Can you believe this shit? Use, look at that. He's using a little small tissue. What's that going to do? So I also want to talk about the Ukrainians' blackouts. So it seems like Russia has had enough. You know, they've had enough of all this shelling that's going into the nuclear power plant. So what they've done, they've shut it down and they've started hitting the infrastructure which is affecting um, Ukrainian um, obviously power as well and they kind of deserve it they were asking for it you know basically they were killing Russian lives and they were trying to blow up the nuclear power plants by shelling uh, they were attacking Crimea they were doing a lot of stuff and the Russians did warn them they said you you know you guys need to stop it otherwise we're going to start attacking the infrastructure and guess what they didn't stop and uh, they went ahead, they went ahead with this um, offensive god knows how many Ukrainians died in this offensive so let me tell you something about this offensive and stuff all Russia needs to do now is sit back and hold their ground so this is what they're gonna do Russia's gonna sit back they're gonna sit back in all of the land that they've um, they've managed to get so far they will set up defense posts they will set up defense lines and they will basically um, make sure those um, areas are well defended they were caught by surprise uh, I must admit so listen, all Russia needs to do is now sit back and wait. They do, not, they do not need to go and get more land. They do not need to go and head towards Odessa. They do not need to go and do anything. All they need to do is sit back and relax. Because the longer this carries on, the worse it's going to be for Ukraine. Because Ukraine is bleeding so much money every, time, every month they are bleeding money they don't have any uh, money coming into the country all the money coming in is coming through the west uh, coming through donations coming through aid things like that so the west is keeping ukrainians alive so so the longer the russians can hold out the worse it's going to be for ukraine because ukraine they're going to pay for stuff they're going to pay for public services they're going to pay for the troops where are they going to get the money from so the longer they wait, the longer this war carries on, the worse it's going to get for Ukraine. So all the Russia needs to do now is sit back and wait for Ukraine to collapse. And they will collapse. Once they collapse, that's it. You know, Russia can do what they want then. They can take Odessa. They can take all of the south. They can take as much land from Ukraine as possible because they would have collapsed by then. And, you know, it's just, um, that's all they need to do. So talking about blackouts, I found this article really funny. So this article is, is from the Washington Post. It says Europe turns to an unlikely source for Russian energy. So this was uh, written way back in June. And it says here, Europe has turned to an unlikely source, Ukraine. And because Ukraine is actually uh, having an energy surplus at the moment. And reason is because Ukraine has energy to spare after millions have fled. All these businesses have been shut down. All these factories have been shut down. So they have a lot of energy. So a few months ago, Ursula was actually um, meeting up with Zelensky. And she, meant, she said basically in a press conference that Ukraine, you know, she's basically going to be taking a lot of uh, energy from Ukraine because Ukraine has got an energy surplus so all of that energy surplus is going to help Europe so that's what she agreed on well guess what that's not going to happen anymore because <laughs> they're not in energy surplus anymore now they've got blackouts now they're you know where they're going to get the energy from Russia's shut down their main uh, nuclear power plant they've destroyed most of the infrastructure 
So um, Ukraine is in a lot of trouble and this is directly affecting Europe as well because Europe was banking on Ukrainian uh, surplus energy. So that's not going to happen. So have you noticed how Ursula has been fairly quiet recently? She's not saying anything. She's not making any press conferences. She's not making any trips to Ukraine. She's very, very quiet and subdued. But if you remember a few months ago, she was standing up in press conferences after press conferences. She was flying all the way around the world. She was going to stick it to Putin. She was saying these sanctions are hitting Putin where it hurts. These um, sanctions are destroying the Russian economy. These sanctions are destroying the ruble. Her friends uh, Biden is with her and Biden's going to give all of these energy. Uh, you know, all of this rhetoric. Where is it now? She's disappeared. Where is it? She knows all of that stuff was BS, that's why. Talking of Ur Ursula von der Crazy, I want to take you back to the point when um, Biden came for the NATO summit and the G7 and he promised all sorts of stuff to Va uh, Ursula von der Crazy and they were spilling out a lot of garbage between themselves. And this clip has not aged very well at all, at all. And I, I want to take you through it now. And it's actually very, very hilarious. So have a look. You can see in the beginning how Ursula and uh, Biden are, you know, smiling and they're really, really happy. Even though there's a war going on, uh, they seem to be in very, very good spirits. Mr. President, dear <laughs> Look at Biden's smile there. <laughs> Looks like an evil smile, smirky, very uh, cunning smile. He's up to something. Joe, your presence here in Brussels this week uh, at the NATO summit, at the G7 and at our European Council sends a very powerful message. I just find it very unleadership like when a speaker has to turn around and keep looking at Biden and she does this in this um, speech about 10 20 times and if you want to speak you would need to speak to the camera you need to stop looking at Biden I mean it's kind of ridiculous to the world the transatlantic partnership stands stronger and more united than ever <laughs> really and okay. we are determined to stand up against Russia's brutal war. This war will be a strategic failure for Putin. What about a strategic failure Our for Europe? Our cooperation on the four successive waves of sanctions against Russia has been extraordinary and exceptional. The sanctions are now working their way deep into the Russian system, draining Putin's resources to finance this atrocious war. So what about um, these sanctions uh, draining Europeans' resources? What about all of these sanctions boomeranging into Europe? I mean, this speech was made way back months ago before all of these um, crises right now. But she should have seen it coming. Everyone could see it coming. I made videos about this. The Duran made videos about this. Anybody could see it all coming. Our work on sanctions also shows that when we act together, we're stronger and we really can make a difference. And we are continuing to reinforce our cooperation in many strategic ways. On humanitarian and security assistance to Ukraine, on energy. On See how she keeps turning back on Biden and saying energy, this and that. Fighting the threats against our democracies. On solving outstanding issues in the EU-US cooperation, including in data protection, protection and privacy. In a world faced with disorder, our transatlantic unity upholds fundamental values and rules that our citizens believe in. Let me focus first on refugees. Until now, around three and a half million people have left Ukraine. That's not true. You can see from the figures, 12 million refugees have left uh, Ukraine. And this this is confirmed by the UN and this article was 4th of July. 
So we are now in September, so you can add in probably an extra couple of million there. So let's just say 15 million, shall we? Just this week, for example, I announced that the European Union will allocate an extra 3.4 billion euros for this purpose and more will come. This demonstrates our deep support for Ukraine and its citizens. And I want to tell the American people how grateful Europe is for their unwavering support. This support also extends to strengthening Europe's... America is the reason Europe is in this mess. You know, the United States will gladly sacrifice the Europeans for this war in Ukraine. And they will sac happily sacrifice European people. They will happily sacrifice European economy. They don't really care. And we're doing it for, for the Americans. And uh, she is absolutely a puppet, guys. Absolutely a puppet. Energy security and independence from Russian fossil fuels. As you know, we aim to reduce this dependency on Russian fossil fuels and to get rid of it. And this can only be achieved through, of course, first of all, investment in renewables, but also through additional gas supplies, including LNG deliveries. So we want, as Europeans, to diversify away from Russia towards suppliers that we trust, that are our friends, and that are reliable. <laughs> And therefore, the oh, US so commitment to provide the European Union with additional at least 15 billion cubic meters of LNG this year is a big step in this direction, because this will replace the LNG supply we currently receive from Russia. And looking ahead, the United States and Europe will ensure stable demand and supply for additional at least 50 billion cubic meter of US LNG until 2030. And if we look at that, this amount, 50 BCM per year, is replacing one third already of the Russian gas going to Europe today. So we are right in on track now to diversify away from Russian gas and towards our friends and partners, reliable and trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> Everything this woman says is just garbage. And as you know, guys, this, these promises that the United States made about LNG and, you know, that still hasn't um, come to Europe. It takes years and years to build LNG terminals, tankers, the infrastructure. This is not going to happen overnight. So she seems to think one third is already sorted out by United States. The thing is, you know, the Americans, the Germans are just going around all of these different countries like Qatar, Saudi Arabia, begging for oil, begging for gas. I mean, they're going to really freeze this um, winter. And they, the reality is they don't really have a plan. They don't really have any idea how they're going to replace the Russian gas. And this woman is just talking complete nonsense and garbage. I called her out at the time, uh, months ago, when she said this. I made videos on it. And this video has not aged one bit. It's exactly as funny now as it was then. And the funniest thing about this is Biden smirked throughout this whole um, presentation. You know, he's just at the back smirking. He knows all of these promises are BS. He knows that Europeans are going to suffer. So he's at the back smirking away. He doesn't give a crap about the Europeans. And this woman keeps turning back, looking at his face, thinking, oh, you're my friend. You're, you are trustworthy. You are reliable. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous, guys. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, let's move on. So let's talk a bit about Germany, shall we? So there's articles um, going around that Germany needs the help from other EU member states to share the burden, share the energy, share the gas, things like that. Uh, Spain and a few other countries have already um, voiced their displeasure. And you can see from these pictures two babies fighting over an apple. Soon it's going to be a bunch of European leaders fighting over gas. And do you remember when Ursula said in the beginning how 
you know all of these european countries all are in unison or in all in solidarity to stick it to putin and all of that well guess what things have turned around now and now germany is saying that B belgium luxembourg netherlands poland have refused to engage in constructive negotiations about gas solidarity deals so the Eco economic minister robert harbeck has warned in a report so you can see absolutely ridiculous, absolutely hilarious how these Germans are acting right now. And um, so what's uh, German got out of this? What is What has Germany got out of stabbing Russia in the back? Well, they're not making any friends in Ukraine, that's for sure. So Ukraine um, is saying here, Ukraine slams disappointing Germany. Berlin's excuses for not sending battle tax to Kiev are irrational, Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuabela has said. So you can see there's a big history of insults coming out of Ukraine. Um, they are calling um, Schultz a liver sausage or something like that. And, you know, Ukraine has been insulting Germany week after week, month after month. And, and Germany has been just sitting there taking it. So this is what they get for stabbing Russia in the back and they're not getting any respect for it and also I saw this article as well Germany has crossed the red line Russia so those of you who think that one day all will be forgiven in Russia um, all Germany has to do now is open up Nord Stream 2 and everything will be forgiven no it's not going to be forgiven guys Germany has crossed the red line. They have sent weapons to kill Russians in Ukraine. And Russia will never forget that. And you can see what they said here. There will be no turning back after Berlin's supplied arms to kill Russians. So they've supplied arms to kill Russians. And why do you expect Russians to forgive Germany for that? Why? And... In the same way, Ukrainians is asking for more weapons. So Germany is cross. Germany's, dis, you know, foreign policy is a disaster. On one way, they've stabbed Russia in the back. Russia will not. Russian relationship will never be the same with Germany again. And on the other side, you got Ukraine um, shouting at Germany, saying they're not doing enough. They're not sending weapons. They're not. You know, Germany is just cross in, in a bunch of uh, crossroads at the moment. They just don't know what to do. Um, but one thing's for sure, Russia is not going to forgive them for what they did. Um, all Germany had to do was stay neutral. You know, if they stayed neutral and say, you know, st we're, we're, we're going to stay out of this. We don't want to be involved. That's all they had to do. Uh, no, they had to send weapons. They had to be involved in all these sanctions against Russia. They had to be um, talking about regime change in Russia. They did a series of things that are unforgivable, unforgivable to the Russians, and they're not going to forgive the Germans that easily. And I tell you what, you, you know, people will get cold in Germany this winter, very cold. In the meantime, Russia becomes China's biggest gas supplier, and there's more and more gas going into China at the moment. Uh, there's about two or three more lines being built and, and these are being fast-tracked to go into China. So there's going to come a time next year or the year after where you, when uh, there won't be any gas left for Europe anymore. Everything's going to be diverted to the east and not just to China but also to India, also to all of these emerging Asian countries like Indonesia and Vietnam and Malaysia and, and places like that. So Russia does not need Europe anymore. They are happily, you know, got other customers, better customers, more you know, more reliable customers. You know, why would they go back to Europe after everything that Europe has done? So I wanted to also talk about this idiot of the day. Um she has been in a, in, a, in a few idiot of the days. So Sana Marin is basically saying that sanctions must hit ordinary Russians. So, what have ordinary Russians got to do with this um, war? This is like going into Iraq and dropping bombs on the Iraqi civilians. What have they got to do with Al-Qaeda? 
You know, you do not involve ordinary people in your wars. You know, this is all down to politics and all of these politicians doing what they want. You know, and guess what? It's the normal c civilians that actually suffer. And this woman wants all Russians to suffer. I mean, how racist is that? And this woman who goes and parties, drug binges with her mates, you know, dirty dancing with rock stars, is now saying that sanctions must hit ordinary Russians. This is why this woman is the idiot of the day, seriously. Really appreciate all of the support everyone is giving me. I really need you to like the video, share the video, um, comment, whatever you can do to help the algorithm. Uh, try and do your bit. I'm also losing support in Patreon and locals. So if anybody wants to support me on those platforms, I would really appreciate it. Because most of my videos do get demonetized because um, I speak the truth. And, um, you know, they do get demonetized. I'm going to make a separate video to explain this, why uh, why I get demonetized. And, um, and yeah, so I'll... See you guys for now and uh, don't forget to support me in whichever way you can or you can buy me a coffee instead if you don't want to go along that route. Anyway, take, take care for now. See you guys soon.